my brothers, my sisters listening online, and over here. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the people of the masjid for inviting me over here today to do the speech and to lead the Jum'ah. May Allah accept from all of us. Say Amin. Amen. May Allah grant us all genital for those. Amen. May Allah protect us all from his punishment Amen. in dunya and in the akhirah. Allah says in Surah Fatih. Actually, I use this issue. So Allah says, Surah Fatih. <coughs> هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله. That Allah sent His Messenger, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, to with, with the true guidance, بالهدى, with guidance, ودين الحق, and the true deen, Islam, ليظهره على الدين كله. To be dominant over all other ways, over all other religions, over all other customs, cultures, and whatever else you find in this dunya. And so, as Muslimin, we all know our purpose. Right? Allah says, for example, that We know why Allah created us, that is simply to worship Him. We know why Allah sent us to this dunya. That we are in this dunya so Allah can see who is better, who is more excellent indeed. But that, something that we don't usually go into, is that is our individual purpose. You see, we have the individual and then we have the collective. The collective is where we come together, you know, as an ummah, for example. So in our individual lives, yes, we have our individual purpose, ensuring that we are adopting a way of obedience to Allah. Staying away from everything that displeases him as much as we can and seeking his seeking his forgiveness whenever we fall into it. And doing as much as we can of that which pleases him. And why do we do that which pleases him? Simply because we love Allah and we love his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is in our individual lives, but in our collective lives. To ensure that Islam is superior, that the Quran is superior everywhere we may go, everywhere we may look, everywhere we may see. You know, one key lesson, a very important lesson we can learn from the enemies of Islam. Now, if you look at today, no matter who they are, whatever country, whatever race, whatever culture, whatever religion, when it comes to standing against Islam, they will always unite. Have you ever seen it? You see it happening everywhere from the east to the west. Allahu Akbar. This is something we can learn. They can have all their petty issues between them, but when it comes to attacking Islam, they stand together. They always stand together firm. They never stop. They attack us directly in certain countries. They attack us indirectly. They attack us psychologically with the TVs and the indoctrination on our children these days. They never stop. They never stop. Does that mean that we become hostile with the public over here? Of course not. Of course not. But with the enemies of Islam, the friends of Shaytan, it's a psychological warfare that's going on. That we should be doing the same. Allah said actually in Surah al fal that that the wrongdoers, the friends of Shaytan, will always be friends and allies with one another when it comes to standing against Islam, the truth. And if we don't do the same, then there will be a lot of corruption on earth as we see happening today. They support one another. They complement one another. And when it comes to attacking Islam, no matter what their issues may be, they will always put it aside and stand together. But what about us? What about the Ummah? Are we doing the same? Is this a lesson that we can learn from the disbelievers? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Loyalty. It comes down to loyalty. We have one ilah, Allah. One Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One Ummah, one Qur'an, one goal. The goal in the Akhirah is Jannah and the pleasure of Allah. But our goal in this dunya, collective goal, is to ensure that the Qur'an is supreme. Let's ask ourselves the question, is the Qur'an supreme in your life? The rulings of the Qur'an, what Allah tells us to do, is it supreme in your life or do you follow other cultures, other customs when you feel like it? 
May Allah protect us, say Ameen. Something to think about, SubhanAllah. Why does Islam have to be superior? Right? Because in the end of the day, we are not a people who live for dunya. We are a people who live for akhirah. And whether Islam is superior in our time or not, if we have earned the forgiveness of Allah, we are still successful. But that is why it is so important for the Ummah to be united and ensure that the Quran and the Sunnah is supreme upon all other ways, so that the people out there can earn the forgiveness of Allah. So that the people out there who are lost in this dunya can find out what the truth is, and then they can also come and earn the forgiveness of Allah. Making the Quran supreme, subhanAllah. What we see happening, on the other hand, for those we have the ulama, we have many people who are calling to the truth, working tirelessly day and night. They don't care about what the people say, whether the people turn against them. But then you have the enemies of Allah, the friends of Shaytan. You know, those with hypocrisy in their hearts, the kafirin, the munafiqin, the mushrikeen, liutufi unur Allahi bi they want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, with their words. Allah will perfect his light with whomsoever he chooses. Light, nur, is also referred to as ilm, beneficial knowledge, the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. The two greatest gifts that Allah gave this Ummah, the gift of the Quran, the timeless miracle and the gift of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rahmatan lil alameen. And so, what we see happening today, subhanAllah, one example, when we, I'm pretty sure many of us, we are online on social media, we heard that in Arabia, for example, one of the imams of Masjid al-Haram was locked away, for what? Proclaiming the truth. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعَرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ That we enjoy the good and forbid the bad and we don't care what the people have to say we don't care what the critics will say they can say whatever they want to say we are a people only focus on the sight of allah but this is happening this is a reality that's happening over there and also over here sometimes we don't realize it you have a call of calling to you to tawheed to the sunnah but then we end up turning our backs on them then we end up bringing issues that doesn't need to be brought up for example what aqidah do you follow what sect are you from? What manhaj are you following? Allahu Akbar. Does that matter when it comes to Tawheed in itself? When it comes to a simple message, you worship Allah alone and you follow His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no differentiation in that. May Allah grant us all a true understanding. And so if we are not coming together to bring ourselves together, and our communities and our ummah together, and the people out there upon Tawheed and following Sunnah, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the purpose of our lives? Why are we so disunited, so spread it out? But then, when the bombs drop in Palestine perhaps, or maybe certain masjid like how this masjid or this masjid, I think last year was attacked. May Allah grant us all afiyah, say I mean. May Allah grant us all security to be able to practice our religion, Islam, without any difficulty whatsoever. But only when these attacks happen, then suddenly people want to raise their heads and since now the bubbles popped and now they want to start shouting, where's the Ummah? Why is the Ummah not here? Why is the Ummah not standing up for one another? Why are, we, why are we not defending one another? But when we have the chance to do so, when nothing is going wrong in your lives collectively and we'll be calling us to stand together, are we doing so? Sometimes we'll be disappointed if we have to try and answer that question. <coughs> If we are not united upon one goal, which is to make the Qur'an supreme, and the Qur'an is supreme in its nature. The Qur'an is supreme, it is the word of Al-Mutakabbir, the supreme. But in our lives, we need to ensure that it becomes supreme, and in our collective lives. And especially when we come around, let's see in a place of, like the masjid, at least. In the masjid, the Qur'an and the Sunnah takes precedence over all other ways. These days we'll go to masjid, we'll see people, maybe they're from one country, not speaking to a group of people from another country. Is that Islam then? Allahu Akbar. When we are being racist inside the very houses of Allah, how is that Islam? How is that ensuring that the Quran is supreme? We see it happening in many masjid. Sometimes we'll see you know, power struggles, politics in the masjid. Is the masjid a place for that? I hope it doesn't happen in this masjid. I hope it doesn't happen. May Allah protect all of us from such filth coming into the places of worship. Say Ameen. And so you have to look at your individual goals. 
are you obedient to Allah? Look at your collective duty to one another. Where is our collective devotion to one another? Where is our loyalty to one another? And that is where the test of the true Iman is. Allahu Akbar. Look at the Sahaba. They, are, they were the ones. When Allah refers to the Mu'mineen in the Quran, first and foremost, He is referring to the Sahaba because of how they were. When you look at, for example, and today we'll use the example of the, of the, of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, that when they came together, when they were there by Hudaybiyah, and they sent Uthman Allah, to negotiate with the Quraysh, and the Quraysh kept him behind. Up until the Sahaba, Rasulullah the Sahaba thought that they killed him. At that moment, by the way, they were in the Ihrams, they were pilgrims. They didn't have any weapons. The only weapons they had was to slaughter the animals, a little knife in the ihrams, no equipment for war. But at that moment when Rasulullah called upon the Sahaba to unite and stand together and fight to the death if they have to, for one Sahabi, just over one of their companions, what did they do? They stood up and they pledged their allegiance because not even one Sahabi is too low for us to neglect or abandon. Now when we come together, subhanAllah, imagine, put yourself in their situations. You're in your ihram, you have no weapons, the Quraysh is there, and they are quite mighty in terms of their equipment and their, you know, their warfare equipment. And they have their backup right over there in, in, in Mecca itself, where if they have to start losing in a battle, they can easily call for reinforcements. It's not difficult for them. But what happened then when they pledged allegiance? When Allah says, that Allah sent down Sakina, tranquility, into the hearts of the believers at that moment. But they had to display first. They had to display first that they were going to stand as one people. The hearts were one. They were all going to do the same thing, and that is show their loyalty to Allah and His Messenger. And then they will stand together. And when Allah saw that in their hearts. Then he sent down the Sakina to remove their fear over what could happen if they have to fight. And at the end of the day, they didn't even have to fight. They came away with a treaty that Allah said, Inna fatahna laka fatha mubina. It was a victory for them. Just by standing together and showing that strength of courage, that courage from your heart, that you will defend one another simply because you say, La ilaha illallah. Look at how Allah would favor the Ummah. May Allah grant us a true understanding. And why we go through difficulties collectively? You know, with all the financial difficulties today, many people struggling with their families, struggling with their finances. We see the Ummah being oppressed throughout the globe. It's a test of loyalty. Allahu Akbar. It is a test of loyalty. When Allah sends you the difficulty, yes, we know there's many ahadith Rasulullah said that no mu'min is tested with anything except that his sins are being removed from him and he's being increased in reward and in rank but also to show are we truly loyal to one another may Allah grant us all true loyalty to one another first and foremost loyalty to him to the Quran and second loyalty to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and following the sunnah and trying to be like him and third to all of the true many who are loyal to Allah and his messenger. For these are the awliya al-Rahman, not the awliya al-Shaytan. The awliya al-Shaytan, they are disloyal. As Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tattakhidu al-kafirina awliya min duni mu'mini. Don't go take the disbelievers, the friends of Shaytan, as allies over the true believers. Atuliduna an taj'alu lillahi alaykum sultana mubina, Allahu Akbar. Do you want Allah to have a clear case against the day of judgment? He continues to say, Inna munafiqeena fi dark al-asfali min al-nar. The munafiqeen will be in the lowest depths of Jahannam. Lower than the disbelievers. Why? Because the disbelievers, they disbelieved and they were honest about it. The munafiqeen said they believed but they lied about it. So they would have a severer punishment, a bigger punishment than the disbelievers and the mushrikeen. May Allah protect us all from hypocrisy. And so, if we have to stand united, Victory would be for us, Allahu yeah. Akbar. Yeah. But today, look at the Muslim today, treacherous, disloyal, Allahu Akbar. That if we come, let's say we are facing difficulties anywhere. I'm going to give you a simple example, just from the top of my mind. Let's say youngsters go to school or college or university, and one innocent Muslim is being bullied by another. Would you go and defend him? 
Or would you just walk past? How many times do we just walk past? It happens so much. How is that loyalty? No, rather that is treachery. Rasulullah Sallallahu said that the one who offers salah like us, facing the qibla like us, eating halal food like us, is under his protection. The protection of Allah and the protection of the Messenger. So do not betray Allah by betraying your Muslim brother and abandoning him to whoever it may be. Allahu Akbar. Even if you see a Muslim oppressing another person, causing injustice to another person, you still have to help him. How? Rasulullah Sallallahu said by stopping that oppression. Even if it means grabbing him by the hand and pushing him away. How many of us are willing to do that? How many of us are courageous enough? How many of us have moral character inside of us? Moral caliber that we are willing to stand up for what's right no matter what? Okay, okay. And when you look at us today, I think that was just one example. Look at the adult, the normal Muslim man today. We work, and we work, and we work, and that's all we do. That's our collective goal in this dunya, right? Working. We'll go and we'll work all day, then we'll offer a few salah in the masjid, maybe we'll offer salah to Jummah in the masjid, and we think that's our collective duty. And we lost the past. Since when is that the case? Serving the deen of Allah, ensuring that it becomes supreme, the da'wah, where, what happened to that? If you think that the masjid is here, just for us to come and pray maybe once or twice a day or five times a day for those who maybe have retired and then go home and do nothing. That's not the purpose of the masjid. Allahu Akbar. Yes, it's one of the purposes to worship Allah. But it is also to establish a society. A society of justice, prosperity and rahmah. But that is what the Quran brings. It is mercy, justice and insight for mankind to live in accordance with. So subhanAllah, the question that we need to be asking ourselves is, what do we stand for? Is working, hiding behind the excuse, I've got to provide, provide for my family. You know, it's an obligation that Allah gave me. And then throughout the entirety of your life, you don't think even once, what am I supposed to be doing to serve the deen of Allah? Allah has given me potential, He's given me knowledge. Is it just for myself? Or is it for everybody over here? The one Allah gives you money, is it just for yourself? Or is it for the Ummah also? The one Allah gives you power and authority, is it just for yourself to get drunk over? Or is it for the entire Ummah to benefit from? The one Allah gives you things, it's not just for yourself. It's for all of us together. Because we have a collective goal. Jannah together with the companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah grant us that companionship with him in Jannah to those. Say Ameen. And so ask yourselves, where is the loyalty? These days we see Muslim authorities such as what's happening in Arabia turning against the Odia Ar-Rahman, the friends of Ar-Rahman. We see people these days, even the common folk, suddenly a person that's calling to the truth, telling you that maybe something is bid'ah. Maybe this is not okay. You know, this is a sin. You shouldn't be doing it. And suddenly, oh, brother's too harsh. Let's go home. Let's go listen to somebody who just will always speak about this. Let's just speak about the Rahmah of Allah. Right. We're going to speak about the Rahmah of Allah, but here we are committing all the sins on the globe thinking that we're going to get the Rahmah of Allah. It doesn't work like that, my brothers. We need to also have the correct understanding. If we do good, we get the Rahmah of Allah. But if we do bad, we will get other things. We will lose Barakah. We will lose Rahmah. And then we see all the problems happening across the globe today. I think uh, it's almost 125, so I should call it ending over there. But I'll end with one final thing when it comes to our collective goal. And if your purpose in this dunya, yes, you may be offering salah, yes, you may be staying away from sin, but if all you're doing is just running after money, working and working and working and working up until you drop dead, what does Allah say about that? That He will keep poverty right in front of your eyes. Just right in front of your eyes. So you keep running after it as you run further and further and further away from the Sirat al mustaqim but if your goal is Akhirah, if your goal is to stand in front of Allah saying, Ya Rabb, I did my best to serve you, your messenger, and to be loyal, to be together with the Ummah, then Allah will relieve you of all of your worries in this dunya. And He'll grant us victory. And He'll grant us unity. And He'll grant us success. And He'll grant us prosperity. And He'll grant us Barakah. And He'll grant us everything, everything, every good thing you can think of, Allah will grant it to us. There's only one condition. 
and we need to connect to the Quran. You yourselves individually, you come to the masjid, you're over here. Maybe you're, up, you're reciting Salat al Fajr. Do you understand what's being recited? But does it go in from one ear, out the other ear? You live your life for 50, 60 years and you still can't understand it. Allahu Akbar. It's not supposed to work like that. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us a true understanding of the Quran. So that when we hear it, when we recite it, we understand what Allah is telling us. We can do that. Five minutes a day, you recite the Quran and you look at the meaning. We have the resources available. So that slowly over time you can have a good understanding. And then slowly you can start teaching others. And you can start removing the darkness of the heart, ignorance from others. That is what our collective goal, our collective duty is. And when you see ulama, when you see other people calling to Islam, you don't stand against them. You have to compliment them and support them in bringing people together upon Tawheed, upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. May Allah grant us all a good understanding. Barakallahu bihi wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Wa kula qawli hadha, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illa 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 